It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. We appreciate you. Uh, a little bit of technical difficulty there getting started this morning, but we appreciate the goodness of God and everything. I, I thank God and praise Him for what He gave this week as we begin to get into the Word of God. We want you to turn with us to the book of John, chapter 17. The book of John, chapter 17. Last week I mentioned and uh, 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 quoted a little bit from John 17, and as I began to look over through there, God brought that back to my mind, and I was beginning to look into it, and as I read down over this this week, the Lord just, just began to bless, and, and I praise his wonderful name uh, this morning. If you found your place, would you stand with us as we read a few verses of scripture this morning to you? Uh, then we'll cover most of the chapter today by the help of God. Amen. If you found your place, you man. Start reading with me. The Bible says in verse 19, listen to what it says. It says, for their sakes I have sanctified myself that they also might be sanctified uh, through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which thou, which shall believe on me through their words. Uh, they, uh, that they all may be one uh, as thou, Father, uh, art in me and I in thee, and they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Let us pray. Father, we come to you this morning. God, strengthen our minds and hearts. God, give us wisdom, Lord, this morning in your word. Heavenly Father, Lord, strengthen. Lord, I pray, God, the church, hi, God, through these words. Heavenly Father, Lord, may we, God, be able to encourage. Heavenly Father, Lord, God, uh, Lord, and I pray, Father, Lord, for all that you give, Lord, this morning. And I want to thank you, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, amen, and amen. You may be seated. As I begin to get into these, these, this chapter, amen, and begin to think about uh, the, the, the power of unity, and that's what God gave me this week uh, as a title, uh, the power of unity, amen. And we've been given a very precious Precious gift, friend, you and I have. We've been given power uh, and everything from on high through the blood uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. But not only has he given us the power uh, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, he's given us uh, a place to belong, amen, a place to be a part of. And, and we know it today as the church of the living God. I thank God today that, uh, that I'm in the church, amen. I'm not talking about the world church or the mechanical church that's out there today, but I'm talking about a church of the firstborn. Uh, amen. I'm talking about those that are truly saved and sanctified uh, and set apart uh, to do the work uh, and of uh, the evangelism of, of the word of God and, and to spread the glorious gospel uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ throughout this world that we live in. Amen. Uh, the church uh, today is without spot and without blemish. Amen. Uh, it's something that God dealt with uh, when he hung on the cross of Calvary. Amen. And as he hung there, he made a statement. He said, it's finished. Amen. In other words, what was finished? The work that God sent forth for him to do down here on this world. Uh, in this world, amen. Uh, God opened the doors uh, of heaven, amen. Uh, the veil of the temple was rent. The way was made that we can go in before the holy of holies up in heaven, uh, amen. In the true tabernacle that's before uh, the throne of God up there, uh, that, we, uh, that we can go before him and make our petitions known uh, for ourselves, amen. And I thank God this morning uh, that he made it possible, amen, uh, for me to do that. And, and uh, by the help of God, we want to kind of get into a few of the things that God said uh, that he would do for us. Now, this is the Lord's Prayer uh, that he prayed over in the book of John 17 uh, over there. Now, we've got a model prayer over there that uh, that's quoted sometimes as being the Lord's Prayer, but I believe this is, uh, to me, fits the bill more than uh, than the one that's uh, uh, pinned over there in another place where that he kind of gives us a direction on, on how to pray. Uh, amen. But Jesus is praying unto God the Father uh, over there, and as he begins to pray, uh, he said these words in verse 1, he said these words, he spake unto Jesus and lifted up his eyes uh, to heaven and said, all right, let's stop there just for a second. 
and everything. Uh, why did he lift up his eyes? You man, because heaven, friend, uh, is beyond what we know of out there in the world. The Bible calls it the third heaven. You man, mankind's never explored into that area. You man, uh, we have polluted this one here that's called the first heaven. You man, uh, we've got a lot of pollution now out in the second heaven, out there uh, beyond our atmosphere, beyond the reaches uh, of mankind, out there in, in, in that area out there. We've got a rover that's on the on Mars right now. Uh, and and you know and we're touching places uh, out into that part of the world and that gives new meaning uh, to when God's going to destroy all of this and make it over again amen uh, because sin uh, has touched uh, about everything down there the Bible says that this old earth one of these days is going to melt with fervent heat uh, and he said over there he said I create a new heaven uh, and a new earth amen uh, and, and the former things are going to pass away and behold, all things uh, will become new. Amen. So Jesus is looking beyond this fell of tears and he's looking to the throne of God and he's speaking to the Father. Amen. Uh, and as he speaks to the Father over there, he's crying out to him and he says, Father, the hour has come. Amen. Uh, while he was down here on this earth, he, he, he had a goal uh, in his mind. The Bible said that he set his face as a flint uh, toward Calvary and the hour was upon him uh, and he said, glorify thy son uh, as thou hast glorified uh, thee. Amen. That uh, thy son also may glorify thee. Now what is he talking about there? Uh, Jesus uh, before the foundation of this world was uh, was uh, co-equal with God. Amen. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. They all three worked as one. It was one. It was three. Uh, amen. Uh, over there and uh, Jesus said over there, he said, Father I'll go. In other words, there, uh, there was a mission uh, to be made. Amen. And that mission was to redeem man mankind uh, from, a, uh, from a lost and dying world that we live in. Amen. And he come to the, and, and he walked all the way to Golgotha's rugged brow, laid down his life, uh, that you and I might have uh, eternal life. Amen. Uh, to him. Let's look on down in verse 2, and it says, and thou hast given him power. Look at that word power over all flesh. Amen. And now you and I, I'm going to get into that here in a minute if God permits and we get that uh, to get into that. Uh, the, the power that you and I have today uh, through what Jesus prayed for you and I here in John 17. Amen. He said all power uh, uh, had given him power over all flesh, uh, that he should give eternal life to as many uh, as thou hast given him. Amen. And this is life eternal, that we might know uh, thee and the only true God. Uh, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work wherewith thou givest me to do. And now, O Father, uh, O oh, Father, glorify thou me with thine own self and with the glory which I had uh, before the world was. Amen. And as I began to look into those verses of Scripture, I, I thought about Jesus as the great intercessor. Amen. Uh, and, and we'll use this morning and the thought and the lesson uh, that was taught this morning during the Sunday school hour over there that it talked about uh, the Barnabas over there and uh, uh, how that Barnabas was a, a great encourager uh, in other words, he, he had developed a relationship of being the type of person uh, that could lift people up. We preached on edification uh, just a few days ago. In other words, and, and what it means to lift each other up uh, uh, before the Lord. Amen. And, and as I begin to think about uh, this, Jesus uh, is, is sitting, my friend, at the right hand of the Father uh, right now. Amen. And he's our intercessor. Uh, and he's not only that, he's our great intercessor. Uh, he's the one that uh, uh, that talks directly uh, to God on our part. Uh, uh, because of why? Because you and I live in a body, friend, uh, uh, that's subject to fail. Amen. Paul penned about that uh, in the in in the book of Romans over there. Uh, and as we learn about uh, the, our life, and the more we grow in knowledge uh, and, and everything, the more we learn about uh, uh, all of the eternal part of this. And He gave us knowledge. Uh, of eternal life through Christ Jesus. Amen. Now he's praying to God over there. He said, Father, them that thou hast given me. Amen. They were yours. Amen. 
And we'll get into that as we read on down through here. Uh, they, they, we, we belong to God at one time. And then God sent us into this world. Amen. Then he sent his son to be the perpetuation for our sin. In other words, to be the intercessor. And Jesus came and he interceded on our part as he hung on the cross of Calvary and he finished the work that God sent him to do. Amen. And through the blood that was shed there, you and I have faith in, in what was done on Calvary that brings forth eternal life down into our heart and souls. Amen. It's faith and belief today. Uh, this is what gives you and I uh, eternal life. Amen. Uh, friend, if you if you outstrip us and go on uh, without faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, it'll be because of your unbelief. Uh, that'll be the reason why you're in hell. It won't be because it, uh, that your neighbor was mad at you, or it won't be because that you had a, an habitual uh, addiction of some kind or another out there. It'll simply be because you did not believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for the salvation of your soul. That's the reason why you find yourself in a dark world over there. The rich man in Luke 16 over there, uh, the Bible said he fired sumptuously every day. Amen. Uh, he knew the law. He knew uh, uh, that. He knew the politics of everything. Uh, there's a possibility that he went to, uh, to uh, the services and everything else like that there. But somehow or another, uh, he never received uh, uh, the gift of truth. Amen down in his heart and life. Uh, the Bible says if when you get the gift of truth, it'll set you free. What's he talking about? Free from death, hell, and the grave. Free from the sin uh, that you commit down here through the blood uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. The truth uh, is this morning uh, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he came into this world, he finished the work that the Father gave him to do. Amen. He sat down at the right hand of the Father, and he's our intercessor uh, today. Amen. John 17, 6-8. Let me read them. This morning, he said, uh, I said, I have finished. I see, he said, I have manifested uh, thy name unto them which thou gavest me uh, out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have what? Kept thy words. Amen. Uh, and I have given unto them thy words which thou gavest me and they have received them, and they know surely that I am come from thee, uh, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Amen. Now notice what was here. Uh, Jesus said over there, he said, I've what? I've manifested my name. Uh, unto the world. Amen. Jesus came into this world. Amen. And he was born a, a virgin birth, a, a miracle birth. And not only that right there, he lived a vicarious life down here. That means he lived a spotless life down here. He was without sin. He was without without rebuke. Even Satan himself over there, he said, is it not written uh, that even if you dash your foot against a stone, uh, you'll have someone there uh, to do these things. And uh, several months ago now, I can't remember how long it's been, we preached a message over there concerning uh, the, the life of Jesus over there and how that he lived and probably was growing up and, and how that his brothers and sisters uh, over there that was born after him to Joseph and Mary, uh, how that they probably envied Jesus over there because uh, he was a perfect child. Uh, and everything. And can you imagine uh, some of the things that were said to him? Now, I know this is not in the Word of God. It's not written anywhere. We have very little written about the, the life of Jesus Christ. Amen. But I've grown up uh, among bigger families. Amen. And when one seems to have the favor of the parents, uh, the other kids will, will, will ridicule them. Well, now Jesus was told, I mean, Mary was told uh, that before that he was ever born over there and, Mer and Martha uh, spoke about him, uh, what type of person he was going to be. And after that he was born, uh, when they took him up for the circumcision at, at, at the eighth day over there, uh, two witnesses uh, uh, came and, and they held him up and, and, and everything and they magnify his office and then he was uh, told of, of one of them over there uh, and Mary said, uh, this child is set for the rise and the fall of many people and a sword will pierce through thy own soul. Amen. Mary never forgot these things. The Bible says that she pondered these things in her mind, in her heart, what type of person he was going to be. Amen. 
And, you know, that's like last week's message over there that the people mused in their heart uh, whether John the Baptist would be the Messiah or not. John simply told them, he said, there cometh one greater than I whose shoe latches I'm not worthy to unloose. It is he that will baptize you uh, with the Spirit and with fire. Amen. You and I know him today as Jesus Christ. He said that the world might know him. Amen. As we got on down into these scriptures over there, he says, uh, uh, and we have surely known that it came out from, from, from thee. He's talking about, he's, now this is just Jesus talking to his father. And as he's talking to his father, uh, he's got you and I on his mind. In other words, he's talking to him over there and he said, Lord, dear, he said, all of these that you've given me, friend, if you're sitting here this morning, saved by God's marvelous grace, it's because the heavenly father gave you faith to believe in his son, Jesus, and the work that was done on Calvary, amen, the gospel uh, that's been preached for almost 2,000 plus years now, uh, amen, it's the gospel of, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said over there, he said, I saved to know nothing among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. There's no other way. We can't get there any other way. And you and I have been empowered. Why? Because God, uh, Jesus, included us uh, in the trinity of the Godhead. Amen. He, he brought us in. He said, Father, uh, them that thou hast given me, as we, let me read on down through there and get into it. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me read this a little bit more. We'll start in verse 9. It says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Boy, what about that? Think of it. Let's look at that little phrase right there. He said, Father, I pray for them. Or he said, I pray for them. I'm praying for you. Do you ever, do you ever stop to think that Jesus is praying for us? Do you think maybe that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now? The Bible says he's making intercession for us. He's interceding for us. I never think, what is prayer? It's interceding on the part of someone that needs prayer. When I got the call the other morning about the, the tragedy that came into our community and everything, the first thing was put forth to me and everything was pray, brother, pray. And I began right then to call on God and say, God, hey, you know the need. God, please touch. God, help. Amen. And that's all, that's all we can do. We can pray and intercede. But the choice comes down to what we think about and how we think about and what we do, uh, amen, uh, as a child of God. Now, those young men that got saved by God's marvelous grace up there during the revival this week, they made a choice. One of those boys I've known since he was this high. Uh, and, and he's 60... 60-ish, not, not now. I don't know exactly how old he is. He's in his early 60s, I believe. Uh, and, and, and I've known him ever since he was real little. I remember him going a little bit to Clear Branch Baptist Church when he was just little uh, over there. Uh, and some of the family went and, and they went over there. I remember him being there. And he was just a little young and running around, playing and everything up there. And here it is, almost 60 years later. He's lived most of his life out there in a lost and dying world. And he come under the tent over there and the Lord God sent the, uh, the, the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God on him and showed him lost and undone without a Savior. And he fell himself at the old-fashioned altar uh, crying out to God, Lord, save me if I am. I never think, uh, it don't matter whether you're two-year-old, 10-year-old, or 200 years old, friend. Uh, if I am, uh, when God begins to get on your trail, he'll show you lost and undone uh, without a Savior. Amen? Uh, and he'll show you that you need this man called Jesus. Somewhere or another uh, somebody will tell you about this man called Jesus that loves you and gave himself for you a ransom for your soul. See we owed a debt we could not pay and he paid a debt that he did not owe. Amen. The debt that he did not owe friend was the sins of this world. He paid the sin debt when he hung there on the cross of Calvary. And he said, Father, it is finished. In other words, he said, I have crossed every T, God. I've dotted every I. 
And the Bible said that he yielded up the ghost. Amen. And during that time on, on the cross, friend, during that time he bridged a gulf that man could not cross. He, he, he made it possible uh, that through simple belief, they don't cost you anything this morning, just believe. The simple belief this morning, you and I will have a way to get from this earth to the third heaven where Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. The Bible says when it's appointed unto a man wants to die and there's a judgment that's coming. And Paul also penned over there to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Faster than you can blink your eye. Friend, when that moment comes, you'll be there. Simple as that. You say, how, do I, how did I get there through the cross? How did I get there through the finished work of Jesus? How did I get here? Oh, how beautiful it is. These people that have give testimony that they have saw that place, that uh, for a period of time that, they, that their body uh, had quit functioning down here and that they saw that place and everything. And there's shows on it. There's all kinds of things on that. I can't doubt a person's testimony. I know what God done for me. Amen. He's gloriously saved me. And through the precious word of the Lord Jesus Christ, he's allowed me to be an eyewitness of that place, not uh, in a bodily way like John saw over in the book of Revelation, uh, but through the word of his God and through the spirit of his truth, he showed me uh, that place over there that the Bible says that eyes have not seen, neither is ear heard, neither is entered into the heart of the man those things that he's gone away to prepare for you and I. Amen. He said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them uh, which thou hast given me, uh, for, they, for they are thine. Thank God I belong to the Lord. Uh, and all mine are thine, and all of thine, uh, and I am, I'm sorry, and I am glorified in them. Now, I thought about that little bit right there. Now, Paul said over there, he said, I, he said, I, I march toward the prize of the high calling. He said, I run as if in a race, amen. I fight, uh, in other words, uh, and, and in other words, and every one of those things that Paul used over there, uh, and it's his race and everything, demands effort. Every one of them does. Demands effort. Now, you and I, were saved, and I've been hammering on this for a long time, that we're saved unto a good work, Amen. And I believe, if, I believe if we'll try to do our part and live godly and do the right thing and be faithful to God uh, and, and, and all of these things right here, it'll begin to manifest. And as it manifests itself, we'll see the church grow. Uh, we'll see people saved by God's marvelous grace. Amen. But anyway, let's move on. Amen. Paul said, I, I, I fight for that and everything. And, and, and Jesus is what? He's glorified uh, in us, in what we do. I'd like to think this morning uh, that Jesus is going to be happy with me uh, at the end of the day. I know for a fact because uh, when I stand for God, amen, it, it's just like working uh, 10 hours. Amen. It takes that much out of me uh, amen, to stand and to preach the word of God and to be under the anointing uh, of the Holy Spirit of God and to feel uh, his presence around me. Amen. Uh, these bodies, uh, they, no wonder God said, he said, I'm going to give you a glorified body. He told uh, uh, Moses over there on the mountain when Moses desired to look on him, he said, Moses, you can't, you can't look on me and live. Friend, you and I can't stand in the presence of God in this natural body, amen. You and I have to take on a glorified body and the only way you get one of them is through and by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. That's how you get one. Friend, if you depart this world and you're still lost and undone, that's the same old body that you've died in. Whether it be old or young, whether it be maimed, whether it be tore apart in a car wreck or whatever like that right there. And the Bible says that in hell you'll lift up your eyes, being in torment. Being in torment. Let me give you one for instance over there. If uh, Pontius Pilate, uh, when Jesus was on trial over there, and, and he got down right to the end of it, he tried his best to rid himself of the guilt. 
Hey man, he said, bring water here. And he brought water and he washed his hands. He said, I'm washing my hands of this man. You know, I have no part of him. In other words, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, you know I'm, he was trying to get away with the guilt. If Pontius Pilate never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior uh, while he was down here in this world, he's begging for somebody to bring him a pan of water uh, right now in the depths of hell, friend, uh, so that he can get rid of the guilt uh, that's on his hands because uh, he's sentenced to death, the very Lamb of God. And the children of Israel gave their voice against him and said, release unto us Brabus, crucify him. His blood be upon us and our generations afterward. Thank God today that God blinded them. Thank God today that God set them aside just for a period of time. And friend, there's coming today, and he said, the hour cometh, amen, uh, and when he was going to be glorified. Over. He's talking about uh, the cross of Calvary, what he would do uh, there for you and I to bring uh, salvation to this world, amen. Uh, he was talking about that over there. But the hour's coming once again, friend, uh, that the Lamb of God's going to ride out uh, uh, on this world, amen. Uh, and he's, the church is going home, uh, and he's going to be Lord of Lords and King of Kings, amen. And this whole world, the Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess hey, uh, that he what is the son of God. He's confessing you and I right now before the throne. He's making it, he's interceding for our lives. Amen. You say, boy, he, he has to stay busy about me and everything. See what you don't understand, church and world out there, that when he done it on the cross of Calvary, that work was done one time. All sin. It doesn't say part of it. It didn't say that's the people that lived in his generation uh, over there, not just the, the sins of the 12 apostles. Uh, he said, all sin uh, is forgiven. The work that Jesus done on the cross of Calvary, the sacrifice that was made, uh, his vicarious life, the spotless Lamb of God, uh, where it says heaven searched and earth was searched and no one was found worthy, uh, but the line of the tribe of Judah prevailed him. And he hung on the cross of Calvary and he sacrificed his life and made it possible that all people everywhere, all over the world, could have remission of sin. Thank God today that through the, through the power of God that he allowed me to come into that forgiveness. Amen. I believe today, and because I believe today, I have a portion with the Son of God. Amen. I have become a Son of God through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now I'm no more in the world, but these are in the world. I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those that thou hast given me, uh, that they may uh, be one as we are one. And while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou hast given me, uh, I have kept, and none is of them is lost, but the son of perdition, uh, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And now I come unto thee, Holy Father, uh, I come unto thee, and excuse me, and now I come unto thee, and these things I speak uh, in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Amen. When I begin to look into the, the, these verses of Scripture, and I'll get on down through 16 here just in a second. Uh, amen. Uh, I thought about the keeping power. Amen. Jesus this morning is the divine keeper. Amen. And he kept them while he was down here on this earth. Amen. And what he's doing then, as he's praying to the Father, he said, Father, and he, his concern was on that 12. That 12 that, that, that he, that he handpicked uh, down here in this world to become uh, the apostles, the foundation stone. You can read about that when you look at the, the description of the new Jerusalem over there. Uh, their names are on the foundations, uh, the 12 foundations of the city of God, friend. Uh, uh, you can, uh, you can look at them. And he said, Father, he said, I've kept them while I've been down here. I've took care of them. I've fed them. I've done everything for them. Uh, Lord, they, they've not had a want that I've not been able to supply. That's what he's saying. Amen to them. While, while I'm down here, he said, but I'm fixing to leave. He said, my hour's come. He said, I'm fixing to leave them and everything over there. And, and he had already told them that they would be scattered as sheep 
over there. So he's a praying in their presence to the heavenly Father, and he says, and he's commending them to God. Friend, you and I, uh, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, was commended by Jesus Christ uh, uh, when he looked out into the future and he saw David up front, uh, lost and undone without a Savior. Amen. Hey, he looked at, at the Father and he said, Father, I keep him. Keep him. So I'm being kept. I'm being kept this morning by the name of God. By the Lord God Jehovah this morning, Yahweh, uh, the great I am, uh, the Holy Father, uh, many names that's been given unto him down through the word of God. I'm being kept by him, amen. Now, the way I read the word of God, there's no greater power, no greater power in all the universe. He is the creator. I'm being kept by the creator this morning. So if I'm being kept by the creator this morning, why should I fear Satan? Why? I don't have anything to fear from Satan. Amen. Now, if I do it, get out here and I, and I destroy my, uh, my testimony out here before the world, I get out here and I destroy uh, these things because I belong to him, got to bury me in an early grave. I ain't, you know, ain't nothing I can say about that. Amen. It's Lord, it's me. Oh, me. Oh, me. But if I live godly and I walk according to the course of the word of God and do my very best, amen, uh, the Bible tells me over there that there's some crowns that I can have on the other side. And praise God, one of these days when we crown him Lord of Lord and King of Kings over there on the other side, amen, I want something to lay at the feet of Jesus over there and say, Lord, you're worthy. What you did for me, you're worthy. Thank you, God. Uh, uh, thank you, Jesus, for giving me to God so I, so that I can be kept. Amen. You say, well, uh, you bunch of Baptists, you preach this once in grace, always in grace. No, I don't preach that. I do preach once you're saved by God's marvelous grace, you'll always be saved. Amen. But you got to be born into the family. And only you know, friend, whether you've been born into the family or not. Hey, Amen. My last name's Effler. 1956, uh, I was born uh, into the family uh, of the of Barl Effler and Charlotte Effler. I was born into their family. Hey, Amen. You say, how do you know that? Well, if you took a picture of my daddy and set it up beside me today, we look alike. You don't know what my daddy looked like? Just look at me. I never think. And, uh, you know, he couldn't deny me. And friend, when you're born into the family of God, hey man, if you live a godly life and everything like that, they're, they're going to know who your heavenly father is. The Bible says, by their what works, ye shall know them. By their works. Hey Amen. So I'm being kept of the father. And according to the Romans chapter eight, and the last few verses in chapter eight, there's nothing I can do to separate myself from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's move on, or I'm not going to have enough time. Amen. Uh, verse 15 says, I pray not uh, that thou shouldest take them out of the world, uh, but that the world should, uh, but thou shouldest keep them from evil. Now, let's look at that little phrase, right? thing that God give us, amen. Jesus said, Father, keep them from evil out there. Now, you and I know that our adversary, Satan, the Bible says is even as a roaring lion, he's sinking whom he may devour. Do you know that the only way that Satan can devour you is if you let uh, him devour you? The Bible says God tempteth no man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away uh, through his own lust and through his own pride and through his own eye. Amen. That's what draws people away. Amen. The lust for worldly things and stuff like that right there will pull you away from God. You don't, you don't lose your salvation. You lose, friend, uh, your personal relationship with God. God will pull his spirit back from you until uh, you find yourself somewhere or another uh, down in the hog pen eating slop like the prodigal son over there. And when you find yourself down there, uh, you'll look up just like Jesus did. You'll look up and say, Father, help me. Help me. That's what you'll do. Amen. You say, uh, is, is, 
Can anybody get there? Yes, you can. And yes, they do. They've been some great men of God down through the years that stood and preached the word of God that's been drawn away with their own lust through riches and different things like that right there that's been drugged back out into the world. And this day and time right now, when you mention their names, and I won't mention their name this morning, when you mention their names, it has no effect. No effect on the church of the living God. Why? Because they destroyed. Some of them done went out, stripped us, and gone on. You say, did they get saved? If they were saved by God's marvelous grace, friend, they made it to heaven. They lost some things. Romans, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Every man's work will be tried. Uh, if you've got works, gold, silver, and precious stone, the fire, the fire of God's words refines that, and they're, and they're made great. But the wood, hay, and the stubble, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, will be burned up. Amen. That stuff down there, they'll be forgotten. A lot of it, you, the, the devil won't let a lot of people forget who they were. But they've outstripped us and went on. You say, preacher, could that happen to you? Well, of course it could happen to me. Amen. If I take my eyes off of Jesus and I get slack and, and I quit being faithful to God and I quit be and I quit praying and I quit studying and, and everything else like that just in a little while, uh, the devil, he'll find a crack in my armor and the first thing you know, he'll bust that armor off of me and, and, and Satan, friend, uh, will take over uh, the, the, the position of my mind and my heart and the first thing you know, I'm back out into the world doing stuff that I hadn't ought to do. And if God buries me in that kind of situation, friend, I'll suffer great loss over on the other side. I'll be saved, yet so as by far. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Saved, yet so as by far. Amen. Because, see, friend, once you get born into the family of God, you can't unborn yourself. Amen. You're going. Now, whether you go in smelling like smoke or not, it's our position. You know, you know we make those choices while we're down here. Amen. But this I want you to understand this morning that Jesus prayed for us. Amen. And he said he prayed, Father, he said, Father, keep them from evil. So he's keeping us this morning from the evil that's out there in the world. Then in verse, in verse 17, 18, 19, he took, uses the word sanctify. Amen. Uh, the word sanctify, uh, in other words, means he, you know, that uh, uh, to set us apart, uh, to set us apart from the world. Paul penned over there, he said, you're not of this world. And it's also in this, you know, we're not of this world. Amen. You know, uh, our heritage, friend, is, is, is it's a heavenly heritage. We're not of the world, friend. We've been, we've been salvaged out of the world through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been made a new creature in Christ Jesus. Uh, this is not our home down here. We're pilgrims and strangers passing through it. That's all we're doing, just passing through it. And he just said, be ye also ready and aren't you think not? It's coming. Amen. So we can be ready. Amen. So he said, he said there, he said to sanctify them and everything. And that word sanctification, uh, when I began to look into that, in other words, uh, he's asking God to do what? He said, Father, give the world their approval. Give them your approval. Sanctify them. In other words, uh, you know, he's asking God to, to give his approval on the church, on the born again believer, down here before the lost and dying world. Now remember, uh, we're preaching on the power of unity. Uh, through the power of God and through the unity uh, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God, uh, you and I are, are more uh, than a force to be reckoned with out here. Amen. The Bible says, and Paul penned it, he said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. We have the power to overcome anything. We have the power uh, to walk with our heads high down here in the lost and dying world uh, and to live our, our lives amen, uh, in the justification uh, of God's approval through the unity of God over there. He said, Father, he said, them that thou hast given, he said, he said, let me read on and I'm going to try my best to get them to the last little bit. I ain't got but just a few minutes left. Listen to what it says. Neither I pray, neither pray thee I, uh, neither pray I thee alone, but for them also which that uh, which shall be. Shall, 
Get away from me, devil. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which uh, shall believe on me uh, through their word, uh, that they may all be one. As, the, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they may also be one in us. We have a oneness today. Now the church over there in the beginning, over there, uh, they had all things common. In other words, they, they, you know, it, it was, there was nothing that had polluted the church over there in the beginning. When God set it up over in the book of Acts over there and he sent the Holy Spirit of God down here into this world uh, in my, uh, to lead God and direct, there was no pollution in it. Paul warned a little bit later on. He said, don't let things creep into the church. Well, friend, there's been a lot of stuff crept into the church in the last 2,000 years. And when you look at somebody that's lost out there and they point their finger at the church and everything and say, if I want to see a good fight, I'll go down to the bar. That hits hard. In other words, what they're saying out there, they're looking at the mechanical church out there and everything, not the church of the firstborn, not, uh, not the true church. They don't see that. Uh, because they're living in darkness and they're not being able to see the light, but they're seeing uh, the, the mechanical church, the workings of this, and they see people that cannot get along and people that uh, it causes problems and they live their life just haphazardly out there in, first in the world and they look at themselves and they say, I'm as good as they are. And because the devil has took this and allowed stuff to creep in uh, to the church of the living God, he said, preacher, you're preaching perfection. I, I know that I can't be perfect down here, but I serve one uh, this morning that is perfect. Amen. And his name is Jesus. And because I'm in him and he's in me and we are in God and, and, and God is in us, the oneness of there, you and I have power. We have the power to overcome anything that this world throws at us. Anything. Amen. Verse 23, and in them, uh, in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect. <laughs> I like that. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me uh, and hast loved them and hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me uh, be with me where I am. <laughs> Don't you like that? Amen. Praise his wonderful name. Friend, that's the, that gives litigation to what I quoted a while ago. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. God said, he asked Jesus, he said, Father, them that's loved me, them that's believed in me, them that's trusted in me, I, when they leave this world, he said, let them be where I'm at. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Jesus begged, he asked God for that. In prayer, while he was down here on this earth, looking up into the heavens and the witnesses that was all around him and, and, and the political mess that was in his day and time. You think we're living in a political mess now? Uh, friend, it was, it was a gone back then too. It was. And it'll, it'll always be that way. As long as mankind's upon the face of this earth, there's going to be, there's going to be controversy. Just pray that the Lord lets you be on the right side. See, which is the right side? It's on Jesus' side. Uh, amen. That they may glory which thou hast given me, uh, for thou uh, lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, uh, hath, uh, what? <clears throat> O righteous Father, the world hath, no, hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these uh, have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and I will declare it, uh, that the love wherewith thou hast loved us may be, what? In them, and I in them. God is love. Amen. And when God is in you, you have love in your heart. Amen. Amen. And if you've got love in your heart, it can't help but manifest itself to a lost and dying world. That's a message God's laid on her heart. Amen. To be one with God. And you say, how is that possible? Jesus prayed for it to be possible. Amen. That's a message God's laid upon her heart today. Let's stand to our feet this morning.
Friend, if you're here this morning, you know you need a touch from God. You want to come down to this old fashioned altar, go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, amen. The, this altar is open. I pray that the Lord help you. Uh, amen. This morning, I trust something's been said that'll be a help. Amen. Along the way. Father, we're so thankful, dear Jesus, Lord, for all you've given. Heavenly Father, today, bless and touch the church. God, I pray, Lord God, that you take this message, Lord. God, beyond the confounds of this building, Lord God, as it goes out into the world, Lord, may it touch hearts everywhere it goes. Father, and we'll praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Good day and God bless you is our prayer.